I studied at Mont Saint from uh, two, one, 2012 to 2017, so I was there for five years. Most people do five at Mont Saint, right? There's this thing called an oreboco, which is like a, an additional sixth year to say thank you, um, which I sort of did, but it's not a hard rule, right? I, I, so after I graduated, then I was going back to Mont Saint every month uh, and working there for a few, like maybe half the time. Um, while I was trying to find my home, you know, trying to to uh, find a house and et cetera and start my own business. So that's what I did then. While now, since I'm doing this as a professional myself, yes, I, I do uh, continue to have professional relations with my teacher and the garden that he runs, Monsanto. So, um, I mean, I see him at professional events and, and uh, but in addition to that, every once in a while, he'll ask me to do some some very specific work for him when it's uh, my skill set is uh, needed. So in 2018, I found this home uh, on the internet, and then from then I, we moved in 2018, and from then I've spent the last what would that be now six years um, living here with my family and building the garden in this this area. Fortunately. I found the house on, on like an internet website that was geared to bring young people away from the city, right? So not not necessarily like out in the countryside because this is not the countryside. Uh, but anyway, so and I found that and it was it was an older house, but it was clean and we had the opportunity. I could by looking at the pictures and things that were part of that initial real estate listing, you know, I was very excited to to be able to try to. Uh, buy the place and because I saw such potential in it you know the 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 home and the the garage which I could so quickly turn into a workroom and the the landscape that was already here and so I, I, I jumped on that opportunity and and it would took some some time to get approval for the mortgage and things like that but eventually uh, we moved in yeah in the spring of 2018. I mean, that's because you, you can look at this and say, all right, well, if you wire these, you want to wire these two. But it's like, I wired these two down to do the, exactly that. So, they can, so, I, I, so I opened the business of, of Trials Bonsai in, in September 2019. And um, and ever since then, I have the my garden is open for visitors by appointment and also for uh, having classes, lessons, um, even that being just like a two-hour lesson or two-hour workshop for a beginner, all the way up to um, months-long homestays. So by, if you call ahead and make an appointment, anyone can come and visit the garden and with no pressure to buy anything or anything like that. Just come and enjoy. I mean, this is a, a large garden. Uh, I think inside of the like the finished garden place, we have about like a little bit over one acre of land. So it's a lovely place to come and just to spend time and enjoy and look at trees and relax and and you know that's the goal of what I wanted to do when I built what I the image I have is not not like a maybe many you might see of in traditional Japanese bonsai gardens it's a and no offense to anyone this is not an insult but they're very small very tight spaces where there are lots of bonsai in very you know packed very packed but here I wanted to have a more open a uh, more relaxing space that you could enjoy. And so again, um, by appointment, anyone is welcome to come and visit. Or if you would like to take a lesson, we can offer a seasonally specific, obviously with bonsai, we do different scopes of work depending on the season, but that's how we would do those class workshops for beginners or intensives for, you know, if a, a student wants to, to specifically learn about how to repot pine trees, well, we can, we can accommodate that. Um, and I'm happy too, you know, before I was doing any bonsai, I was a, a, a classroom teacher in the United States. Um, so my experience, my background of education, I have a passion for teaching and for for uh, helping people learn things. And so I quite enjoy that. And yeah. Um, so this is an Ezo Matsu in Japanese, Ezomatsu, but it's a spruce from Hokkaido, right? And uh, well, I've, I made uh, this 
rock planting, this slab rock planting, uh, Yosewe, right? Uh, but at any rate, so Ezos, they, for, for me, I, I studied at Mansayan, and uh, Mansayan's history is uh, Sapporo Kato, the, the third generation owner of the, the garden. In between the two world wars, he and his father uh, were, went up into Hokkaido, and they were the first people to be able to bring those these Ezo spruce from Hokkaido back down into the Saitama, into the Tokyo area, and, and successfully cultivate them as bonsai. Um, and Sapporo Kato was very well known for making forest plantings. And so even now at Monsan, there are many uh, Ezo forest plantings on slabs. And so when I, earlier this year, I've been collecting this material slowly over the past few years. And then earlier this year, I thought it was about time to, um, to build this, what we have behind me now. Because for me, you know, this tree is, is, this is mine, right? This is not really for sale. Um, because for me, this is, this is my like ode to my teacher, ode to my, where I studied. This is uh, the, the, the heart of Mansayan through, through me. And because I have an affinity, when I first went into Mansayan, I didn't know anything about bonsai, but I, I saw the Ezos, I saw the massive forest plantings, and, and that really struck a chord. This is one of the reasons that I wanted to pursue bonsai, was these these rock slab plantings, these forest plantings. I think they're so beautiful. So for me to be able to do this as a, an homage to my, my, uh, my place of study, um, this is an important tree for me. And, you know, and it's, if I may say so myself, quite beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you yeah. talked to me about the, the weight. Oh, yeah, it's real heavy, man. I don't even know, man. <laughs> uh, I'm a little worried about trying to move it, right? We will have to slowly and carefully engineer some, some way of moving it. We've already discussed and we have a, a plan ahead. But surely the, we're talking about some hundreds of kilos of weight with uh, the trees and the soil and the stones and, and the, the, stone, the slab. The stone. Yeah, because you can, oh, this piece of stone, this piece of stone, this piece of stone, this is all one very large stone in, in the middle. Um, so it's very, very heavy. But uh, I would love to be able to display this tree for uh, an exhibition or out on a show. Um, but I don't think logistically we can ever really manage to do that, because at least of because of how, how big it is, right? Uh, you have already uh, an, a space for put this uh, this forest here. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna. I'm there. gonna put it over there in underneath the uh, the the cedar trees, so that you know. Because one of the issues with working with Ezos now down in the Tokyo area is that the summers are just very very hot. The sun is very strong, and these trees easily burn. Mm. So to have a, a dedicated table special just for this tree in a kind of arch of of evergreens um, this will allow it to have some natural shade during the summer so we have to a little less concern with it burning during the summer time yeah so this is the, the book uh, a, a book of uh, rock plantings by Saburokato so you can have a quick look at some of the examples of the plantings that he was was doing um, let me find a so something like this right they were very well known for these rock plantings, these slab plantings of Ezos. Ah, so this is like a, mm -hmm. some example of how, how he's making. I mean, this was what this is 50 years ago. Very fun. <laughs> well, so when visitors want to come to the garden, it, it's much of what we do is bespoke, right? It's depending on the, the visitor, what we work hard to accommodate any type of thing. So whether that means that um, uh, if they're requesting it, I'm happy to drive down and pick them up at their hotel and have a day out and then I'll bring them back to their hotel or if they want to come out on the train, they can do that. Uh, it's very easy to get here by train from downtown. It's one train line. You don't have to change trains or anything. It's quite simple. Um, 
we have people come out by by car or uh, even we've had a number of bus tours. A large large okay. touring buses can stop. Uh, my next door neighbor is a a seven hundred year old Zen Buddhist temple. Um, so it's a lovely kind of double event for visitors. Uh, large tours, large groups. They can come and enjoy some bonsai here, and then we can go next door and we plan ahead with the abbot. And he has a, a nice little program to explain uh, Zen as well. You know, we do we do a lot of of um, education based events, like activities, workshops, and things like that for students. Whether that be one on one or group setting, the other aspect of the business that we do, we do a lot of export, and so immediately in the the next, let's call it, uh, eighteen months, um, we expect to expand the export facilities in the back to help uh, facilitate that. A little easier um, and um, the other project what we're going to do is to renovate the workroom so that when people come for classes it's um, a little nicer inside right now there's no air conditioning so in the summer it's a little rough uh, but soon enough there'll be some air con in there <laughs> What I'm trying to do, what I was trying to do was was give the trees space to breathe. So the the walkways, the aisles between the benches are, are set wider than in most gardens. And the number of trees that I have displayed on any of the benches is far fewer. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want each tree to be able to stand by itself and have space around it so that the visitors to the garden, anyone looking at the trees, has, has space enough to step back and actually see the tree and have the tree around this the space around the tree enough to have them not not crammed into their neighbors you know so i want everyone to all of the trees to have space to breathe um, and i think in that way when you walk when visitors walk around the garden i hope my my goal is that they can calm down that they're not in a rush that they can slow down and enjoy and r take the time to see little moments you know there are there are some kind of hidden walking paths and benches and things. And, and I really wanted to make a space that was really pleasant and welcoming to be in. You know, yes, this is my home, but I, I don't want people to feel like they're intruding on my family. Right. So it's it's tr I'm trying to design a place that is welcoming. And last thing. Um not least you come in paris for bonsai culture expo yes i am coming to paris for the contra the bonsai culture expo yes <laughs> yes and i'm really really excited for it too man it's uh i'm really looking forward to it i think it should be a lot of fun and like i said before you know if my background is in in education then having the chance to demonstrate and to speak with people and to learn from them as well as to share my experience with them it's just a lovely lovely opportunity yeah. See you in Paris. Yeah, see you in Paris as well. <laughs>